ओके फ्रेंड्स सी बेसिकली इन जोग्रफी टू अंडरस्टैंड वाट इज हैपनिंग अवट सैड द अर्थ मे बी फार्मेशन आफ मौंटेन प्लैट्यूस वाट एवर अवट सैड द अर्थ यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड वाट इज हैपनिंग इन सैड द अर्थ बिकॉज मौंटेन आर् बिल्कुल अप बिकॉज आफ समिंग हैपनिंग इन सैड द अर्थ वालोस आर् कमिंग बिकॉज आफ समिंग हैपनिंग इन सैड द अर्थ दट वै यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड वाट इज देर इन सैड द अर्थ वी कॉल दिस टापिक ऐस इंटीरियर ऑफ द अर्थ इंटीरियर ऑफ द अर्थ सी इन टेन्थ क्लास आलो टेन्थ और नईन्थ क्लास ऐ थिंक यू वुड हैव स्टडीड अबउट क्रस्ट मैंटल कोर दो थिंग्स एवरीबडी नोज दट ओके हवेवर यू पी एस सी हेव स्टाप आस्किंग क्वेश्चन ऑन क्रस्ट मैंटल कोर दे आर् आस्किंग मोर क्वेश्चन ऑन टेमपरेशर प्रेजर डेन्सीटी डिस्कटिटी सेमिक वेवस् दी कैंड आफ थिंग्स दे आर् आस्किंग मोस्टली सो एवरीबडी नोज दट क्रस्ट मैंटल एंड कोर बट लेट सी समथिंग बियॉन्ड दो थिंग्स ओके फस्ट आफ आल इनिशियली इफ यू टेक अर्थ अर्थ इज नॉट एक्साक्ट स्वीयर so in earth on the uh, let us say our aim is to study what is inside the earth it is our aim our aim is to study what is inside the earth what will you do if you are asked to find out what is there inside the earth what will you do uh, i will measure the three layers what will you do uh, you know three layers of earth like four plus four. no see four. see you are asked to study what is there inside the earth you do not know nobody knows a team has been formed you are the head of the team your team has to do some kind of experiments you have to do something to understand what is there inside the earth what will you do i mean by digging uh, how much density see the first thought this comes from digging digging is the first thought right so you always feel like you have to dig without digging how can you know that's one idea However, how much can you dig? Maximum you can dig for. This is the maximum. That too, not all places. At some places, somebody have dug it. Even the miners, the deep earth miners also, maximum you can dig is 10 kilometers only. But the earth is almost more than 6,000 kilometers. Earth is more than 6,300 kilometers almost. But you are digging only for 10 kilometers. What can you study from 10 kilometers? You cannot know. Okay. However, just what is your name? Okay, just what is it? Uh, okay, just like how she fell a digging in the initial stages also. Most of the geographers started digging at different places in the. I mean, it's not the same place. Some people dug at the polar area, some at the equatorial area because they felt that the interior may be changing if you change the location. Okay, so they found that the first two kilometers, first two kilometers, the rocks, the rocks in first two kilometers. Have very low density, density of almost 2.5 gram per centimeter cube. Very low density, less density rocks. Okay, and most of them are sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary. Then, going beyond two kilometers, when they went for from two to almost eight kilometers, the next eight eight kilometers, they have found mostly crystalline rocks. mostly crystalline rocks and uh, the density is slightly higher the density they found was almost nearly 2.9 gram per centimeter cube but that's where they stopped they cannot move further now what you can do you can imagine you can extrapolate okay for first 8 kilometers density increasing in this way so next 6000 kilometers you extrapolate extrapolate means similarly for every 1 kilometer density increases by 0.2 0.3 like that but that is wrong you cannot do like that because as you go inside temperature plus everything changes you know so that is where it stopped so your team failed monica three team failed what they have done 10 km is understood now any other ideas in the class if you are the head of a team anybody if you have to find what is inside that what will you do you don't know anything inside the earth you have to do something what will you do race what is that race Oh, one second. Oh, what is that race? Race. Oh, very good. Which race will you send? That is also a good idea. Some kind of radiation race sent into the earth. 
but they also can travel maximum 2 to 3 kilometers only. 2, two is also very high because earth is a solid body you know more than 2 to 3 kilometers is difficult so uh, that also will fail after 10 kilometers what you said seismic views what are seismic views no what are seismic views first of all good uh, your name Mohan tell me you, Mohan is saying that sir using seismic waves I will find out what is inside the earth using seismic waves but what are seismic waves when earthquake comes when there is earthquake some kind of waves will transfer the energy see for example tube light is there light is traveling in the form of waves light energy I am shouting or teaching whatever the sound energy is is uh, you know transported by some waves similarly what is earthquake earthquake means inside the earth inside the earth at some place rocks may be faulting breaking because of friction so inside the earth because of high pressure at some places rocks may break fault due to which some energy will be released energy lot of mechanical and potential energy is there inside the rock when the rock breaks the mechanical energy will convert into or chemical energy will convert into seismic energy which will be transported in the form of seismic waves any kind of energy has to go in the form of waves only okay so from this point of the earthquake actually we call this point as focus focus is a point at which earthquake occurs now from here the energy will be transferred in all directions see all directions now what is the closest point this is the closest point this point is called epicenter so though the waves travel throughout the earth only this part of the country that particular country for example let's say japan is there only japan will be highly affected for example let us say here usa is there usa also friends usa also the waves will come but as they are traveling for long distance they won't be so strong for example i am shouting now person who is very close to me impact will be more person who is in another classroom they also can listen but slightly similarly earthquake occurring at any point in the earth will send waves to entire earth but the major effect impact will be felt only at the epicenter because it is at the shortest distance from the focus so actually what mohan said is correct because seismic waves travel throughout the earth so if you can study the seismic waves you can understand the entire earth because they are traveling throughout the earth now so you can understand about entire earth so it's the best source okay but people like mohan came very late before that other people did other experiments for example i'll tell you some people started studying about the density friends density like how i said the density of the entire earth can be found out by using some kind of trick for example by using the gravitational force of the earth you know the diameter of the earth using the satellites you can study diameter you know size of the earth density can be found out using the newton's gravitational law or some satellite studies like that they found that many scientists actually found that the overall density of earth is nearly 5.5 gram per centimeter cube overall and they have dug the first 10 kilometers first 10 kilometer density is only 2.5 gram per centimeter cube so from that they thinking that okay density will increase till center of earth they have deciphered they did not find out nobody went into the core took a part of the core nobody went into the center of the earth but understanding the overall density of earth and understanding the density of the top part they deciphered that at the center of the earth maybe here the density would be all core actually core is the word i use for center of the earth the central part density would be more than 11 gram per centimeter cube it should be more than 11 gram per centimeter cube high density another team so another team uh, thought that see anyhow we cannot go into the earth so let us study the entire density top density decipher level they have come to conclusion friends none of this is exact 11 12 is not exact nearly average even today also nobody knows exact density today also average only know okay now then now the question this question you have to answer now the question is why density in the first two kilometers is 2.5 then 3 then 3.5 then 4 why density is increasing somebody said that pressure is increasing as pressure pressure is increased the volume will reduce what is density density is what 
mass per volume now for any material how much ever pressure you put mass will not change but volume will reduce as volume reduces as volume reduces the density overall density will increase as denominator falls down the overall value increases so, so somebody said that this is the reason as you go into the earth for example from point a to point b if you go point a is carrying only this much load but point b is carrying from here to here point a only this much point b more load so as you go deeper into the earth the load carried we call it as super incumbent load we call it as super incumbent load super incumbent load means the load that is carried above that point so as you go inside this load will increase as the loading pressure increases so volume decreases so overall uh, density will increase this is the thing but this is what is said by one team like for example Monica team to said that but then Mohan said that no it's not possible because the amount of compression there is a limit you cannot make this uh, desk into a thin paper even you put a lot of pressure also it cannot become thin paper impossible so density at some point after it will stop density cannot be increased to that much extent then another team said that it is not density it is a material the material itself is different the material present in this part may be silica material in this part see material from here to here may be silica from here to here may be magnesium from here to here may be iron and nickel you understand so what they say is density is increasing not because of pressure alone but because of change in the material a, and this is found to be correct later on it is found that this is correct that means what is correct what is correct what is correct if this is the earth the first part of the earth having the density of almost 2.5 to 3.5 gram per centimeter cube the material is mostly silicates and aluminium silica and aluminium and from here to here the next part where density is almost 4.5 gram nearly 4.5 gram centimeter cube there the material is material is silicates and magnesium actually it is magnesium mg but they write like this sima silica and magnesium here they write cl silica aluminium and from here to here the center of the earth okay here to here the density is almost 11 to 14 11 to 14 gram per centimeter cube there it is mostly nickel and iron nife so they said that the material is changing actually that is why density is increasing this is a study of density density study now however friends remember this which material is in which part of the earth that is also found only by the seismic waves i will come to that now i am just telling you that density is increasing not because of the pressure but because of change in the type of metal material okay now friends now come to the density is over come to the temperature studies some people start studying temperature of the earth as you go inside how temperature changes for example take the earth you dig for first uh, say one kilometer two kilometers keep on digging initially they found that for every hundred meters for every hundred meters you go into the earth temperature is increasing by almost 2.5 degree centigrade nearly 2.5 degree centigrade but they have dug only for 10 kilometers no see they can dig only up to 10 kilometers in this 10 kilometers they found that for every one kilometer temperature is increasing by 25 degrees centigrade every one kilometer but how can you say that it will be same increase till center of the earth is the same increasing you know i'll tell you the problem if temperature is increasing the same way linearly till center of the earth by the time you reach almost 3000 kilometers no need to come to center of the earth even 3000 kilometers temperature will reach almost 25000 degree centigrade so you tell me if temperature is 25000 degree what will happen the end earth will melt you will be standing on liquid 
at the end it will become liquid so hot okay so that is not possible hence from this you cannot decipher that so then then they start thinking they found out that they start they, then they started studying about the volcanoes because volcanoes come from inside the earth they want to understand the volcanoes to study the temperature of the earth okay see volcanoes even volcanoes also will not come from center of the earth they will come from some 300 400 500 km that's all maximum or 1000 km maximum they cannot go beyond that okay not 1000 friend maximum 200 300 only 1000 is impossible 1000 okay now see so maximum 100 to 120 km let's so say 100 km at the depth of even earthquake also friend earthquakes also maximum 100 km only earthquake will not come from center of the earth the entire earth will break almost on the crustal area top area earthquakes occur all can also 100 to 120 km only okay now at the depth of 100 km there is some liquid called as isthenosphere actually isthenosphere means a liquid layer throughout the earth liquid layer will be there throughout the earth means it will, it will not be continuously there throughout the earth there will be breaks here it won't be there again here it is there here won't be there again it will be there means nothing is continuous friend nothing is uniform in the earth okay so isthenosphere is a layer of the earth at a depth of 100 kilometers roughly 100 kilometers 100 to 200 kilometers you can say 100 to 200 okay wherein magma will be there magma magma means molten rock molten rock where temperature is almost 1100 degree centigrade temperature is almost is very high temperature friends at 1100 degree temperature at that temperature the rocks in the crust top area will melt they will melt automatically that's why volcanoes come from there volcanoes come from that much depth now now the question is okay just if you go only 100 kilometers just 100 kilometers or 150 kilometers temperature friend remember 100 means here 100 here 200 here 150 here 175 it will change don't say exact 100 okay is another the average now the question listen to the question carefully within 100 kilometers you are able to reach 1000 degree so if you go to 200 300 400 kilometers will it become 2000 3000 4000 degree no then why only at this place exactly in the top 100 kilometers why temperature is so high what reason because of presence of radio no actually magma means if temperature is high the rocks will melt and then magma will come because of magma temperature will not come because of temperature magma will come okay so see the reason they found is from 100 to 200 kilometers depth there are radioactive materials that is the point there are radioactive materials friends radioactive metals radioactive metals will keep on disintegrating when they disintegrate what happens you know when they disintegrate yes energy is heat lot of heat wherever radioactive metal disintegrating continuously for millions of years lot of energy heat is released because of that only exactly from 100 to 200 have high temperature that is the reason that is the reason okay now but the temperature studies will be like this here let us say start with 0 degree surface of the earth okay go to 100 kilometers at 100 kilometers temperature will be 1100 degree centigrade directly go to i will tell you why i am writing 2000 and there is a reason i will tell you this number later why i am writing this number when you go to 2900 kilometers deep temperature will be just 3700 degree that's all when you go to 5150 kilo i will tell you the reason for this one okay i'll, I'll come to that temperature will be 4300 degrees when you go to center of the earth where almost 6370 km center of the earth the radius of the earth is 3, 6400 km 
okay there temperature would reach maximum 5000 degrees that's all see just 5000 first 100 kilometers 1000 degree after the 6000 kilometers just it is 5000 understand the reason is here it is too high because of radioactive disintegration that's the reason otherwise uh, there also temperature should be just 500 degrees 500 400 degrees one more thing they found is temperature is not same everywhere for example if you take earth friends as i told you before also the top layer of the earth is you know it is not a single piece like onion onion now if you remove the top of the onion single piece will come out right single layer earth is not like that the top of the earth is broken into several parts this is one part this is another part another part another, see so earth is broken into many parts these parts are there no each part is called a plate the name they gave is a plate so the surface of the earth is made up of plates and these plates will keep on moving for example see if this plate let's say this plate is a this plate is b if these plates are moving towards each other if both plates are moving towards each other then they will create a fold mountain here a fold mountain will be created fold mountain like himalayas let us say this plate is going this direction this plate this direction so when these two plates are going away from each other from here magma will come out see magma magma is under that now isosphere magma it will come out it will create volcanoes it will create volcanoes so why these plates the top of the earth is made into plates why are these plates moving they can be stationary you know they are moving because under this plate something is there which is moving what is something magma isosphere under the plates isosphere is there it is liquid as it is moving uh, the plates are also moving why isosphere is moving why the magma is moving because friends when you boil the water take a vessel pour water boil the water will the water keep on moving as stationary why they move transfer of heat first the bottom of the water become hot top is cool hot water comes up cool water goes down sides of the vessel will become hot that water will come here so there is always the movement of the water is to transfer the heat only similarly the entire isosphere is not of same heat no different heat different temperatures no so it will constantly keep on moving this this concept is called as convective currents the movement of the magma is called convective currents friends convective currents means <clears throat> the current means movement convection means transfer of heat heat transfers by conduction convection and radiation convection means transfer of heat by movement of the material conduction means transfer by contact radiation means transfer by waves okay so here the heat is transferred by convection that's why you call convective currents now the question is why the plates are in constant motion which of the following is the reason number one earthquake number two volcano number two convective currents number four because of the core like this understand convective currents so friends this because of the high temperature only the plates are moving you understood the relation between these two if here high temperature is not there the plates may not be moving because liquid will not be there now because high temperature liquid is formed magma is because of that plates are moving this idea okay now let us study temperature temperature i, I have to temperature just you now friends density understood temperature understood let us come to pressure let's come to pressure density is over temperature is over now come to pressure friends see definitely pressure keeps on increasing because pressure at any po at any point pressure is nothing but the weight above that the weight above that weight above that gives power pressure pressure is force per unit area pressure is force per and what is force weight only force weight only 
so as you go into the earth the pressure increases now when the pressure increases very important point melting point increases when the pressure increases the melting point increase that means i'll tell you i'll tell you see you take a rock here otherwise first of all you take you take a rock you take a rock let us say the melting point of the rock is 700 degrees centigrade that means at that temperature rock will melt but if you keep pressure on the rock if you keep a lot of pressure on the rock then the melting point of the rock will become 900 degrees centigrade that means as pressure increases melting point increases this concept i will explain here i will tell you how it is how we can apply it you see friends you take a point here take a point here okay let us and take a point here now let us say as you go deep into the earth at this point temperature is say temperature is 400 degree centigrade at this point temperature is 600 degree centigrade in between temperature is 500 degree centigrade let us say same type of rock is there same type of rock is there throughout and let us say the melting point of the rock is 550 degree centigrade where here here the rock here melting point is 550 because high pressure the same rock here melting point is 450 you understood the rock is same here the melting point is 450 here melting point is 550 now tell me here will the rock be in liquid state solid state solid, solid. why because solid liquid here what here what is the melting point friend 550 is the melting point what temperature 600. so it will be in liquid state whereas take here here the melting point is 450 temperature is so here also liquid only now come little below here let us say the melting point of the rock is 800 is a melting point temperature here is 750 degrees here how the rock will be solid, solid understood so whether the solid whether rock is solid or liquid not only depends on the temperature but also depend on the melting point melting point that is important so at a certain place in the earth if something is liquid you don't think that their temperature is very high their melting point also plays a very important role now this concept using this concept i'll explain you about about the core of the earth core see center of the earth center the entire part is called core core is the central portion of the earth this is called outer core this is called inner core okay <coughs> friends outer core is a liquid outer core is a liquid inner core is solid now here the doubt will be see as you are going inside the earth here temperature will be less temperature may be how much temperature said you i told you let us say 4500 inside temperature will be 5500 or around 5000 degrees now the question is here temperature is more no so it should be liquid no then why this is solid but this is liquid understood that is the question to explain this question i have explained you the concept of melting point now using that concept you can say that see outside temperature may be less but here see both outside inside is core only for the core entire core material is nickel iron metal is same only but in this place because of this pressure because of this pressure in this place the melting point in this place the melting point of iron and nickel silicates or iron nickel melting point is 4200 degree centigrade whereas inside the core deeper core the melting point is 6000 degree centigrade understood so what happens in the outer core for nickel iron the melting point is 4200 what temperature so it will 
melt liquid but the inner core what is the melting point but temperature is only so it will melt it will melt now it's solid that is the reason okay this is the reason you should understand why outside liquid now the topic is over next one next one friends do you know how some volcanoes come from a place where magma is not there what we think is wherever magma is there from there volcano will come no at some places only solid rock will be there but still volcano will come how we'll see take this part take these rocks these are the solid rocks above this rock lot of other rocks are there high pressure is there high pressure now for this rock the melting point is 500 degrees centigrade is the melting point 500 degrees centigrade okay <coughs> but in this zone in this zone the temperature is only the melting point is 5000 temperature is let us say 4000 only 4000 so sorry 400 400 so friends in this zone temperature what temperature 400 is integrated what is the melting point of the rock 500 so will the rock melt no, no solid rock now let us say on the top of the earth there is a fracture there is a crack on top of the earth because of which all the rocks above this area all those rocks started moving away when start when rocks started moving away the pressure will reduce decrease see on a rock if you keep lot of rocks high pressure will be there if you remove some rocks pressure falls down so when the pressure falls down no the melting point will decrease the melting point becomes 350 centigrade <coughs> understand but temperature is same inside the earth at this point temperature is 4000 only previously melting point was 500 why pressure was there now pressure is released when pressure is released the melting point will reduce. reduce now tell me will the rock melt or not <coughs> rock will melt now when this rock melts it becomes magma and it will put pressure it will come out the, again coming out of the earth is a different concept sometimes it can come out of the earth sometimes it will stay inside the earth that is different concept which will explain during the volcanicity okay so don't think that don't think that already magma should be there only then volcano will come no a rock can convert into magma because of fracture and then lava can come out magma can come out okay this is the next idea we should understand about uh, <coughs> pressure temperature melting point <coughs> now one doubt one doubt that most of you may get is sir if in the center of the core you have to answer this question listen carefully my question is my question is at center of the I mean, at the core temperature is 5000 degrees 600 degrees centigrade if it is so hot the temperature should be transferred to surface also no because earth formed 4.5 billion years ago in the last 4.5 billion years high temperature can transfer no can come to surface earth no why it is not coming just guess the answer anybody guess it why it's not coming <coughs> no no here temper no, i'm not talking about magma I'm talking temperature the magma temperature here high temperature is there see when you keep very hot thing and try to cover it with other things the heat will come out no heat cannot be trapped inside no locked inside no hmm? water. water no see actually in i don't understand water means what water ocean. see ocean here ocean is there here land is there leave about ocean think about land okay the ocean is there ocean also below water is not there no water is there only inside the ocean no? friends do you know what is an ocean? If you are standing here, ocean is just 6 kilometers, that's all, 6 kilometers of ocean. I am talking about 6000 kilometers here. In the entire earth, ocean is nothing. Ocean is just some 6 kilometers thick water, that's all. It is negligible, ocean negligible. Tell me, the entire ocean will evaporate if this temperature comes out. Yeah. Normal temperature due to conduction. So, you are saying conduction is there, conduction not there? Yeah, it is there, but uh, there will be a drop in temperature. Mm. <coughs> Even drops also, still 5000 degrees centigrade is there, no? It has to be transferred slowly. Tell me uh, in other way, is conduction there, not there? What is the meaning? Heat is not coming out. So, conduction is? 
not there that means rock is a poor conductor of heat friends do you know rock if you take, if you take 400 kilometers if you take 500 kilometer thick rock you take a rock of 500 kilometers just 500 kilometers you put high temperature here high temperature that will travel and come here only after 5 billion years it will take 5 billion years for the heat to travel how much distance 5 kilometers earth was formed only 4.5 billion years ago so you please wait for some more time then it will come out okay so friends that is the reason why surface of the earth never becomes hot it takes a lot of time we are talking about almost 6000 kilometers here just 500 kilometers is taking 5 billion earth formed when was the universe formed anybody the present solar system they formed how many years back almost 5 billion years ago 5 billion earth initially sun formed from sun everything formed so earth formed almost 4.5 billion years ago but how earth formed again it's different theories are there some people say that earth formed by a concept called planetesimal concept planetesimal what is planetesimal initially the entire solar system is made up of small rocks small material small spherical like this see, called planetesimals and see for example this one this one this one this one they combined they form earth these five combined form mars like that the small planet cells started colliding colliding getting cemented attached into each other becoming a single sphere called as earth mars venus saturn whatever that's how solar system formed so they say that as per planet cell system when many small planets planet cells collide lot of heat will be generated so when earth was formed initially there is a lot of heat inside the heat because of so much heat earth should be liquid now so they said that that's why core is liquid they say that core is a liquid because when they collided because of collision heat generated so core is liquid this is one concept one idea second concept is that tidal hypothesis Earth is formed by a concept called as tidal hypothesis. What is this tidal hypothesis, friends? Tidal hypothesis means initially only sun was there. Sun was a gaseous body, hot gaseous body. From that sun, some material is ejected. Some material is ejected. This ejected material that came out of the sun, after coming out of the sun, they could not escape the sun. Why? gravitation sun pulled it by gravitation so they started moving around sun like planets so as they came out of the sun they are also very hot earth is also very hot slowly now it is cooled there's another concept and the concept of how earth is found so they say that in either of these two concepts you can say that center of the earth will be very hot some people say that the entire earth is very hot when it formed now what happens see if entire earth is hot now the temperature on the top can go out temperature on the top can go out for example when you have when you have any food item say upma you take this much upma top will cool down top center part will be hot right you know no similar earth also top of this cooled because it's exposed to atmosphere interior is trapped inside that's why they say that uh, center of the earth is hot surface is cool another concept okay so there are different ways of thinking of why earth is like this now now let us come to mohan krishna now mohan krishna said that to study the earth density temperature pressure satellite studies all are not uh, you know so convincing they are they cannot help us in understanding the earth completely that's why mohan krishna says that you have to use which waves seismic waves let us study what is the important of seismic waves friends by the way there is a division in the ncrt geography ncrt book they said that there are different sources of the formation of the uh, there are different sources of studying the earth's interior one source is called as indirect source indirect one is indirect source other is direct source direct 
other is okay now see in the indirect sources in the indirect sources one is the concept of how earth is formed you imagine how earth is formed from that you tell that what is there inside the earth so directly you're not seeing what is there inside you're using a theory telling what is inside it's called indirect source example origin of the earth based on the origin of the earth they are telling what inside the earth second thing is satellite studies satellite studies is what they will do they will, they will not touch the earth using satellites they will say entire earth is 5.5 degree as per newton's gravitational law 5.5 gram per centimeter cube based on that they will study what is inside the earth they are indirect they are not direct you are not going into the earth direct means what direct means volcano Volcanoes come from inside, direct source. Earthquakes. Earthquakes means nothing but seismic waves. Seismic waves. Why? Seismic waves are also called as earthquake waves. Why? Now, let's see. Seismic waves travel throughout the earth. So, if you study seismic waves, it's a direct source because it's traveling in the earth now. Whereas these things are indirect sources because you are not going to the earth. From outside, you are imagining something using some hypothesis okay like that there are two sources in the satellite study some people imagine temperature pressure density i told you temperature pressure, all these things all these studies they will do in that so ncrt they gave these two sources now i have finished almost these things now the only thing left is seismic waves let us study first of all before trying to understand the interior of the earth from seismic waves First, let us understand what are seismic waves. Friends, in earth, at any point, if there is a disturbance, rock breaking of rock, faulting of rocks, the mechanical and chemical energy will be converted into seismic energy. And this energy will be transferred in the form of waves. What waves? Seismic waves. Light waves transfer light energy. Sound waves have a sound energy, seismic waves have seismic energy. Now, however, the interesting thing is they do not release single wave, light release single wave, sound single sound wave only. But the seismic energy comes in two different types of waves. That makes interesting. That makes it very interesting. So initially it will release one kind of waves initially. It's called as P waves. After some time it will release another kind of waves called as S waves. So let us study what are these PVS spheres. Very good. See, P waves is primary wave. That means primary wave. That means which comes first? When an earthquake occurs, which comes first is called primary. Which comes second is called second. That's why P and S. Primary waves travel very fast. Their velocity is very high. Their velocity is very high. Friends, see, either the primary waves or the secondary waves, both of them will come and hit the surface. When they come into the surface, the surface will move. Surface of earth will move. That is earthquake. Earthquake is not P and S. What is happening inside the earth? How do you matter? How, how, how does it matter to you? When they hit the surface of the earth, when surface of earth is moving, that's called earthquake. That's what you feel. These waves are called surface waves. These waves are called as? Some people call it as L waves. <coughs> L. Surface waves. This is what we will feel. But inside the earth, what are the waves? P and S. We call it as body waves. L waves are the surface waves. P and S are the body waves. Here we will study only the body waves. Surface waves are not required for us. Surface waves, how can they help you in understanding inside the earth? Your, your idea is what is the aim? Study the interior of the earth, inside the earth. For that, which waves is useful? Body waves, not surface waves. You know? Tell me which are more destructive, which destroys the buildings destructive? A body waves, surface waves? Surface waves only. Okay, but destructive. Okay, anyhow, leave that one. Come to PVS wave. Friends, the velocity of S waves is lesser than P waves. Lesser. P waves have very high velocity. S waves have got low velocity. <coughs> also, P 
P waves can travel in the solid and it can travel in the liquid also. P waves can travel in both. S waves can travel only in solid. This is a very interesting concept. Based on this only, we can tell that uh, outer core is a liquid. I'll tell you, I'll come to that point. Okay. First, I'm telling you the, the properties of the waves. Now, P waves travel like, you know, longitudinal waves. P waves are longitudinal. S waves are transverse. Transverse. Now, what is this longitudinal transverse? Let me tell you, friends. <coughs> Let's see, actually, longitudinal waves means, let us say, basically, what is a wave? Transfer of energy. Let us say, energy is moving from here to here. Direction of transfer of energy. Now, the wave generally travels either through solid, liquid, some material. Now, what is the movement of the material? For example, this is the material. This material is moving like this. For example, in a cinema theater, while uh, taking a ticket for ticket, we'll stand in the queue, right? Is there in seventh class uh, physics? All of us stand in a queue. Somebody pushes me from back side. Uh, I will push the uh, front person. I again come back. This person will again push the come back. So the people in the queue are not moving. I am not moving. I am just moving like this over the soul. Next person. So people will be there only. But the energy is transferred till the last person. The last person will keep his head inside ticket counter. You can take it out if it's a small counter. But thing is, there the energy is moving. People are not moving. Everybody is resting there only. So here, the movement of the people is like this. Thing. Like this. It is in the. It is parallel to the direction of the wave. So when the movement of the material is parallel to the direction of the wave, it's called as longitudinal wave. Example, sound wave. You know how do you draw sound waves, friend? Like this. Thing. Do you know what is this sound waves? Sound waves travel like this. That means when sound wave is traveling in this direction, the material in the air or whatever, let's say air, in the air, the, the molecules, the atoms of the air will move forward, come backward, move forward like this. That is called longitudinal. Longitudinal waves means the movement of material is parallel to the direction of the wave. Example sound waves. What is this is longitudinal? What is transverse wave? Transverse wave means if this is the this is the direction of the energy, direction of the wave, the material will move up and down like this. Like the waves, sea waves. The waves in the sea, how they move? Actually, do you know have you seen sea waves? Where? Where have you seen? In the sea only. Where can you see? See, friends, sea waves, if you observe sea waves. For example, you are standing in the coast, you are here, you are standing, you are standing in the coast, this is a sea, see, okay, the waves come like this. Now tell me, you tell me, take a distance of 1000 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers, you only, take a ball here, will the ball come here, this water will come here, the entire water will come here. If the entire water comes here, then in the sea water will not be there. All water in the coast only. <coughs> oh, okay, see, what happens, you know, every water molecule will go push the next water molecule. See, it will go push this molecule, again comes back. Then this, that means this molecule transferred the energy, it came back. Again, this molecule transfer energy, comes back. Again, this, you uh, understand? So, every molecule transfers energy, comes back. It's called to and fro motion. However, however, it is moving like this, like this, like electromagnetic waves. You know electromagnetic waves? Light wave is a longitudinal transfer wave. Transfers. All electromagnetic transfers, they move like this. The movement of the material is perpendicular to the transfer of the energy. Okay? So, this is called transfer wave. Now, friend, S waves are like this. P waves are like this. Now, a question for you, all of you. The question for you is, among these two, P waves, S waves, which way will compress the material, release the material, which way will break the material? Yes, that's why, that's why 
P waves are called as compressional waves. They compress the material. S waves are called distortional material. They distort, distort. Because of distortion, rocks will break. This will break the rocks. But this will liquefy. Increase pressure, release. Increase, release. Liquefication happens. Liquefication. Liquefication happens. P waves liquefy the rocks. S waves break the rocks into pieces. That's another important one you should know. Okay. Now, after understanding P waves and S waves, now let us study the interior of the earth. Now I am starting the topic. But all questions will come from before only in the exam. Topic will start from now only. Don't worry. Okay. Now, friends. See. Take earth. They found, they means the seismographers. Example, actually what happens, you know, whenever the earthquake, you know, either the natural earthquake or man induced earthquake also, you can also induce earthquakes. Okay. The waves travel all directions. Now what happens, you know, in every country there will be a seismometer. There will be a seismometer in every country. And this seismometer will measure the waves, how strong the waves are. For example, this seismometer recorded 7 energy. This seismometer recorded 1 or said 2. That means what? See, nobody knows where the focus is. How do you know where the focus is? What you will do? Whenever earthquake comes, you know, different people in different countries, here 1, here say 1.5, here say 2. Year 3, year 4, year 5, year 7. Now, throughout the world, every country, in every city, they have seismograph. They will measure the intensity of waves. After everybody measures, they will see highest where it is. Highest where? Here. Here. Next highest here. So, they will draw lines and they will find out. Mathematically, they will find out. Okay, this is the hypocenter. They will not go into that and see where the focus is. Okay. So, based on the seismograph, seismometer, they will identify the energy of the waves. From that they will tell where the focus is. Focus. Actually, focus focus is also called as hypocenter. Also called as hypocenter. This is called epicenter. Epicenter is a place where uh, maximum impact is there, which is uh, closest to the focus. Closest to the focus. Okay. Now, friends, the, the seismographers, geographers, geologists, they found that. Broadly, there are three types of waves. The P waves and S waves are, for example, they call it as low velocity waves. Low velocity waves, high velocity waves and intermediary velocity waves. These are intermediary. That means, through the seismographs, geographers found that the P waves, S waves that they are getting are of three types of velocities. High velocity means the velocity almost more than 9 km per second to 12 km per second. High velocity waves. Okay. <coughs> Friends, again, the velocity don't buy hat. Don't even write, waste. They don't ask because. High velocity for P wave is 9 to 12 kilometers. High velocity S wave will be 6 to 7 kilometers. You understand? P and S both are will not have the same velocity. P is high velocity, S is low velocity. Don't remember the numbers. Just remember that they have got a set of waves of high velocity, set of waves of low velocity, waves of intensity. Based on that, they said that Earth is made up of three layers. This is a deep layer core. Deep layer core. The, the seismic waves traveling through the core are very fast, which clearly says that core has high density because the, the, the velocity of the wave increases if density of the material increases. No, no, increases. For example, take sound wave. Sound wave travels fast in the uh, air or water or uh, solid. Hey, solid only. Sound wave in the air, what is the sound wave velocity? 
three thirty meters per second, three thirty meters per second. In the water is almost seven hundred meters per second. On the railway track, in the track is almost fifteen hundred meters per second. For example, if there is a train coming from long distance train, you want to listen to the sound. What sound train will make? Ooh, chik, 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 chik. It makes no. So, for example, I stand in the, I, I stand like this. I want to listen to the sound of the train. Train is far away. I could not listen. Then you keep your ears on the track. Keep it when train is far away and not near. Okay. When train is far away, you keep the ears on the track. You can listen to the sound. You can listen. To, why? Because in the track, track is solid. No, sound travels very fast. Fifteen hundred meters per second. In the age is three meters per second. That's why if anybody wants to know whether train is coming long distance, keep the ear on the track. It will come easily. There are two reasons for that. One reason is sound travels fast in the solid. Second reason is there is no obstruction. Track is continuous. No, air is not continuous. Trees will be there, buildings will be there, nonsense will be there. But other sounds will be there. The bus horn, train horns, some classrooms will be there. But in track, nothing will be there. The second reason, anyhow. Yeah, hey, this kind of thing you should know. Listen, the point is, uh, yeah, the high velocity waves are found deep inside the Earth, which clearly shows that inside the density is very high. So high density is here, high density, very high. Then, intermediate velocity waves they found here. That means somewhere there is another layer with intervelocity. So, from these three things, they found that there is a high density material here. There is an intermediate density material here. There is a low density material here. So based on the seismic waves, they are able to decipher, tell very clearly. They can even calculate density also. For example, you tell me the sound, you, you, you tell me the speed of sound wave. I can tell you which material. In the gold, I know. Iron, I know. Nickel, I know. Means if you tell me the speed of a wave, I can tell which material it is. Like that, they found the speed of the wave using the seismographs. From that, they can easily tell the density of material. You no need to go into the earth to tell them density. That is why seismic waves are the best source for studying the earth's interior. You understood how density is found out? How you tell me how the density of crust, mantle, and core found? How did they found? Using what density? Using which method? Using which method? We know density of the crust, density of different layers, speed of the seismic waves. From the speed of the wave, we can tell density of the material. So based on that, they said that there are three layers: crust, mantle, surface. Top layer is crust. <coughs> Intermediate layer is mantle. Inside that is core. Density also known from velocity. Now, now let's do the next one. They found that. They found that in the earth. They found that the velocity of the wave is two. Shall I increase to three? Shall I increase to five? Shall I increase to six? I can increase seven. I can increase to eight. Like that. I mean, at some places, the velocity of the wave suddenly shall increasing. You tell me, a wave is going. Suddenly, velocity increased. Why? What may be the reason? Sudden change in the density means till that point one material is there suddenly material is changing understand so they found that the major in the school you study know the light wave light wave when it goes from the air to the water it bends why because velocity changes velocity well, changes because of change in the density of the material air and water like the same okay anyhow see now here they found that in the entire earth exact two places Suddenly, the velocity increased a lot. That is, they found that that is at a depth of at a depth of nearly 200 kilometers, and again at a depth of 2,900 kilometers. These are the two places where the velocity of wave suddenly increased. Suddenly. So from that they said that okay, so 0 to 200 there is one layer called as crust. At 200, suddenly new layer is coming, new layer. It's called as mantle. 
after 200 new layer with a new material called as friends crust is made up of cl mantle silica and magnesium core is you understood how did they how did they tell do you know how they told the material nifa and all based on the velocity of the wave means that much velocity will, will occur only in the iron means you know now we can do current experiments also in the laboratory take iron pass this pass the p wave take uh, um, p wave means nothing but you create a earthquake in the laboratory earthquake means uh, some disturbance you create break a rock you can break a rock in the laboratory create some waves and put iron see how much speed is coming if you put nickel how much speed magnesium you can current experiment in the laboratory very easily based on this at that the core is from 2900 to here mantle crust so the, so these two points are called as discontinuities they are called as friends discontinuity means sudden change in the density sudden change in density is called as discontinuity now the discontinuity between the crust and mantle is called as mohovaric or simply moho mohovaric or simply moho discontinuity it's the important films bit moho discontinuity occurs between crust and mantle at a depth of around 200 friend not exact 200 friends at some places 200 some places more for example here from here if you go maybe 150 from here if you go maybe 200 from here maybe just 70 kilometers 70 so uh, i should tell you one more thing friend in the for the exam we draw circle but actually it's not circle actually this is earth no crust will be like this see this is crust see the crust this is the crust crust is not a perfect circle at some places crust is very deep 200 kilometers 200 at some place just 30 kilometers when I discuss you, when, when I discuss with you, the isostasy topic, the topic of isostasy, isostasy, at that time I will tell you one very important thing. Wherever mountains are there, no, at that place the crust is very thick. Wherever, wherever plateaus are there, no, plateaus, their crust is intermediary. Wherever ocean is there, no, ocean, their crust is very thin. On surface, if, if ocean is there, underneath crust, crust is very thin. If mountain is there, crust is also big. That we will learn later. So, don't think that exactly 200 kilometers. Maybe here 200, here 70, here 30 changes. That you should know. That you should know. Okay. Now, second discontinuity. Actually, Moho is a, was a scientist. He found it. That's a Moho discontinuity. If you found one more discontinuity tomorrow, it will be called Mohan Krishna discontinuity. What's wrong in that? Okay. But don't try now after the exam you can try see now friends 2900 kilometers that is the place where mantle ends core starts that's found by whom anybody knows gutenberg two people gutenberg discontinuity wechat gutenberg discontinuity this is found between the mantle and core a depth of 2,000 kilometers. Now, friends, these are the major discontinuities. However, there are some small, also small discontinuities. I'll tell you that. Some people, for example, you take like this, friend. I cannot draw entire earth. From the center, I will draw only this part. Entire circle is difficult for me. I am drawing like this. First layer, second layer, like this. Easy for me. Layers. Now, the top layer, let us say this is a crust. In the crust also, there are two parts. Upper crust and in the mantle also there are three layers in mantle upper mantle middle mantle lower mantle in the core also outer core again you can divide again you can divide and again there will be discontinuities for example see upper actually where is moho discontinuity moho this one this is more discontinuity where is gutenberg gutenberg mantle and the but there are some others also small discontinuity small for example <coughs> this is this, this is called as conard conard was scientist between upper crust and lower crust why discontinuity is there density is changing density here density is 2.5 here 
but how do you know you tell me how do you know that density is changing for upper lower based on what speed. based on yes speed speed of the waves actually the seismic waves p waves are there here the speed of p wave is uh, 6 km per second here it is becoming 6.9 km see up to 30 kilometers this is 30 km actually up to 30 kilometers the speed of wave is uh, 6 km per second so after that suddenly increasing to 6.9 km per second so based on the seismic waves only everything you are telling if seismic waves are not there we cannot tell anything of that entire earth's interior density layers everything is based on seismic waves so as the velocity of the p wave is increasing we can tell density is increasing that's why Connard is Connard. For example, here actually leave the uh, mantle. In the mantle, there are actually two discontinuities. One of them is called reptic discontinuity. Reptic, it's not very important. Reptic. But this is important. This is outer core, inner core, layman discontinuity. Layman. Friend, the reason I am not telling about mantle is because initially scientists thought that mantle has two layers between that reptic discontinuity but later on they said that is not two three layers that's why it's not important discontinuity but outer core inner core is important very important because outer core is liquid inner core is solid that's why the discontinuity is very important discontinuity it's called lemon lemon discontinuity there's another thing you can learn from the seismic views now friends I think I told you about density, no? Density. Overall density, overall Earth's density is? Crust, crust is 2.5 to 3.5. Density of mantle is? Almost 4.5. Density of core is 11 to 14. Density should know. Temperature should know. Temperature, total temperature also know. Top 0 degrees. Uh, see here at the, um, at 2009 here. Here temperature shall increases from, see, at 2900, temperature is 3700 degrees centigrade. Like the earth, crust, mantle, crust. Within mantle, again, you can divide layers. Within crust, again, divide layers. This core, again, divide layers, okay? Now, this is, see, this is the center of the earth. This is the zero, this is the top of the earth from zero kilometers. If you want to draw a graph, you can draw like this. See. This is the depth. This is the depth front. Y axis depth, zero depth. Here depth is Krasno, 100 kilometers. Mantle ends at 2000. 9 kilometers. The outer core, inner core, 5150 kilometers. This is the depth in kilometers. Center of the earth is 6400 kilometers. Okay. Again, if you want uh, the uh, mantle in two parts, 700 kilometers. Or say 1000. Say 1000 in front, 1000 easy. Exact is not required for this one. Exact is required for this one, this one, this other one. Okay. Now, how do you know based on the velocity of the wave? For example, y axis is the depth of the earth. X axis, you please take the velocity. Take velocity. Velocity of velocity also, you please take in kilometer per second. Don't take meter per second. Kilometer per second. For example, here velocity is 3 km per second, 6 km per second, 9, 12 km per second. Okay. Uh, see, this is the 3 km line. This is a 6 km line, this is a 9 km line, this is a 12 km line. Okay. First, let us draw the P waves. P waves at the surface, at surface, in the in the crust, their velocity is 8.5. Start from 8.5. Slowly they will increase. Why it is increasing? Because? Den yeah, density is increasing. Density increasing? Speed increasing, but exactly at 2009 kilometers, what happens suddenly? Which will come? Liquid layer will come. I told you, no outer, outer core, outer core, inner core. 2900 to is a liquid core. In liquid, velocity falls down. Suddenly, the velocity will again 
positive. Till 5150. From 5150 again, watch till start. Solid. So again, velocity increase. This is a P wave. P. S wave. Somebody has tell me. S wave. First tell me. S wave starts. S wave has velocity of 9 or less than 9? Less. S wave is a lower. Start from 5.5 here. The increase. They also increase, 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 increase. Here what happens? Here? In the liquid layer, does it decrease or increase? increase? Zero. It will not travel also. I told you, you no. Know, S waves do not travel in the liquid. So you have to stop here only. Stop it here. After that, don't write. It will not travel. S waves go only till 2900 kilometers. After the S waves do not travel. Okay? No friends. If you want to show, if I want you to see, take earth. Now let us draw only liquid layer. Let us draw only whole liquid layer. Liquid means still here. Entire not liquid. Again solid is there. Okay. Now, this is the point of earthquake. First let us draw P waves. P. I will draw P waves in blue color. Because I am bored. See, P waves can anybody tell me why I am not why I am not drawing straight line? Why I am drawing curved line? Why? Because as you go into the earth, density will change, material will change. See, take light wave. If light wave is traveling only in the air, you draw straight line. But from air, some water, again air, water changing, no? It will also change, you know? Like that, it also, as the density is increasing, continuously increasing, continuously. So velocity is also continuously increasing. As velocity is increasing, it cannot travel straight, it will travel curve. That's why I'm drawing like curve. Otherwise, I'll draw straight line only. For example, if entire earth is a rubber ball, rubber, same, same material, then how will the waves travel? Like straight line. Straight line, okay? Friends, they are the P waves, friends, see P waves. But the P wave which touches liquid, it will refract. Do you know what is refraction? Refraction means when the wave changes direction because of change in the medium, change in velocity, it bends. See, it will, see, bends. Again, bends. For example, this wave is there bends again bends for example straight wave will come straight only no bending now observe carefully friends the p waves are there p wave p wave p wave everywhere p wave the p waves are there from here entirely p waves are there suddenly stop here again here they stopped again start from here again here is there so, P waves are from here to here and again to here. So, this zone is called shadow zone. What is shadow? For example, standing here, friend. The light rays are coming. Light rays will be there everywhere except in my place. See, you are able to see my shadow? My shadow is there now. Why my shadow is coming? Because light waves are not for who is stopping them? Stopping them. So, exactly in that shadow, light waves will not come. In all other places, light waves will come. Similarly, where, wherever P waves are not there is called as shadow zone of P waves. So this zone from here to here is called as shadow zone of shadow zone of P waves. But friends, if you want the S waves, let us take S waves, okay? See S waves means this is the point of earthquake. S waves will travel here, will travel here, will come here, will come here, they can come here. But after that, can they come? Cannot come. They cannot travel through the... So, S waves travel over this region. This entire region is called as what? Enter called as? Shadow zone of... S waves. Now tell me, Whose shadow zone is more? P V S V. S V shadow zone is more because it cannot travel in the liquid. <coughs> Friends, P 
waves shadow zone is only 120 degree s waves is far more than that far more than 120 degree okay <coughs> this is about shadow waves now <coughs> i'll tell you do you know how scientists found that liquid layer is starting at exactly 2900 how do they know <coughs> this is earth friend how do they know that exactly from 2900 that number how do they know that number how do they know from there the liquid starts based on this shadow zone only <coughs> based on the shadow zone they, from here to here based on this they are able to calculate that okay if this is the shadow zone means s waves can travel only till here s waves can travel only till here that means that is a place from where core is starting liquid core so you understood so everything in the earth liquid core where it is starting temperature dense everything is found from only seismic waves like that seismic waves helps everything see because how do you know liquid core is there s waves are not traveling how do you know there are three layers because three sets of waves are there how do you know that within a layer also two parts are there discontinuities the velocity suddenly changing velocity okay that's all friend the inchir at is over okay take question <coughs> how how seismic waves help in reconstructing the interior of the earth <coughs> how do, how do how do seismic waves help in understanding the interior of the earth understanding reconstruct whatever then do you know how should i answer some people their answer very bad what they will say is earth is made up of three layers crust mantle core a crust uh, mantle uh, core then they say the crust density is uh, 2.9 temperature is so much mantle density 4.5 temperature is so much crust has a liquid uh, core uh, liquid outer inside solid temperature is so much the depth is 700 km 1000 km 209 means they will write all numbers names everything in their field that yes i wrote the answer but they will not get marks to get the marks what is the question from the seismic waves how do you understand so what you have to say you have to say that first you have to first you have to say what are seismic waves you should write de definition seismic waves are the waves which transport the seismic energy released from the point of the earthquake to the surface of the earth seismic waves are three types p and s waves are body waves l are surface waves okay now you'll say that based on seismic waves we can understand the earth in the following way write five to six points first point they found out that seismic waves there are three velocity levels one is pgsg other is p star s star other is ps from this we can say that earth is made up of three layers earth is made up of three layers what is that crust mantle crust mantle core three layers and also you will say that there are two places two places where there is a major change in the velocity change in the velocity two places and those places are one is 200 kilometers other thing is moho discontinuity and from this from this we can tell the crust is there till 200 kilometers mantle is there till mantle is there till 2 to 9 kilometers core is there till center of the earth this is what we understood from the seismic waves this is what we understood next s waves cannot travel in the liquid and shadow zone of s waves is from here to here is from here to here from that we can tell that there is a liquid layer at a depth of 2000 kilometers so outer core is a liquid means see how you write in the answer you are not telling inside the earth you are telling from seismic waves three layers seismic waves to the, the place of discontinuity from seismic waves out is a liquid from seismic like that so from the seismic waves how do you understand should write you should not just write uh, uh, the three layers uh, six sub layers uh, temperature this much density this much uh, names are this much yes i wrote the answer means it's not possible people think that after writing the answers they always feel that yes i wrote the answer 
but they forget what is asked people always write what they know but not what they what what is asked you should always focus on what is asked not what you know let us say you do not know the answer even then write something but from what is asked something manage it but don't write lot of things which are not asked okay this is the overall topic of interior of the earth okay take question <coughs> take question which of the following are true which of the following are true regarding the interior of the earth option a highest volume is occupied by crust highest volume of the earth is crust crust has highest volume option b option b core has highest mass core has highest mass <coughs> option c option c crust has highest mass option d mantle has highest volume and highest mass which is true out of the four d is true mantle has got highest i'll tell you how see actually it will be like this friend this earth you know crust is very thin crust is very thin like this one crust core is also very small actually core is also very small friend crust is also very thin see completely mantle is uh, mantle do you know this mantle is there no mantle mantle occupies 80% of volume 80% volume mantle even the mass also mantle has 70% mass 70% of the weight comes from mantle but remember core core is very small no even then core is 30% of mass why it is so small no? why yes compressed also material iron but iron this is magnesium magnesium is not heavy okay core is 30% mass but volume wise it is only 16% volume 16 percent only less volume core crust is crust is there a crust it is only 4 percent uh, volume for mass 0 percent not 0 0.2 0.3 very less crust is negligible weight weight no weight for crust mantle core has all the weight okay take another question which of the following is called a plate which of the following is called a plate plate option a upper crust option a upper crust option b entire crust upper plus lower crust option c crust plus upper mantle option d crust plus complete mantle crust plus mantle what is the answer <coughs> guess it just guess it guess the answer definitely magi because friend why because tell you i told you no plates is the plate plate i told you plates no a plate is a plate is 200 km thick crust how much is crust crust is only 100 km so crust plus some part of the mantle should be there plate plate next question where is the isosphere <coughs> upper crust lower crust upper mantle lower mantle core <coughs> where is the isosphere upper mantle because isosphere is from 100 km to 200 km isosphere is from 100 km to 200 kilometers upper mantle is upper mantle okay 